This is the future of medicine. It's about you, it's to you, from you. I want to tell you something. What if I tell you that someone sitting in this room, maybe one of your students, maybe the lady, the young lady sitting in the back, will create something that will save millions of lives? What if I tell you that someone, somewhere, sitting and saying, I will be the one who will create this amazing medical device that will save lives, won't be able to even raise a small amount of capital for even prototyping stage. I know it sounds dramatic, but this is the reality. Innovation is not an easy journey, just like using that pointer. There is always a hiccups. When we talk about innovation, we always think, oh, we need to do all these amazing, wonderful experiments. And then we go to the application. In reality, innovation doesn't start from a lab or a hospital all the time. Sometimes it starts from a very simple moment of observation. Sitting in the seat, thinking, questioning, and even wondering, where, where can I begin? I know, because I lived this experience. I started as a dentist. I had my cabinet, I had my patients. And because I wanted to know more, I ended up in an amazing, crazy journey across the borders. I was in hospitals, in labs, in conferences, and a very, unfortunately, failed experiments. And here I am here in Dubai consulting, and I am as advisor to dozens of companies and startups in biotech, health tech, and med tech. To be honest, no matter what the solution is, when someone approached me, I focus on one thing, a very important thing. It's the talent, the innovator themselves. It's you, the future. Because if you have the vision, then you will be able to outcome, overcome all these obstacles. Another thing you need to always think as a talent when I be in charge of helping this innovator is asking a very important question. In innovation, especially healthcare, it's about asking the right question that will solve and meet need. It's about helping. It's about, we heard, compassion. It's about accessibility. So today, I'm not here to lecture you. I'm here to share with you 10 life-tested uh, advices. I lived them, I witnessed them. Are you ready? No? Yes? Okay, let's go. <laughs> I love the spirit. First, and I think we always talk about it, be curious. Like a scientist, I'm a scientist, but I think you have more curiosity than me now in your age. Can ask why? You don't have limited of you don't ask why. Always ask why. Not just as a student. Don't memorize by heart facts for obviously straight A's. You do keep doing that, but also you need to understand why this fact is a fact. Always question that. It's always important to be on the top of any information you observe. Second, let career be learning journey. We'll go back to this learning journey. What does that mean? Not a destination. We always hear that. That's me. To be honest, I always think, ask myself, if I stay in my comfort zone, and as a dentist, having my patients is a perfect plan, financially and professionally and even socially. Would that be 
a good thing? What should I regret? It was an amazing learning, and I will never trade it for anything in the world. Yes, our journey, make your journey a learning journey all the time. You learn, there is no time frame, there is no age, there is no even limits, especially with the, now with the accessibility to the information. Science is not only in the lab, it's in the world. I always ask, how will this help someone I've never met? You know, now when we think of experiment, obviously we have a plan and we think. Labs are cool. We have equipments, we have amazing staff, amazing talents. We have these fancy petri dishes with a lot of bacteria and viruses. We have even robotics. We have now automated lab uh, agents. But the real impact is not only in the lab. It has a real impact when it gets out those walls, when it reaches people. Today, we don't aim. Today, we don't aim to only enhance this classic conventional healthcare system. Today, the whole healthcare innovation is shifting toward early detection, prevention, and even eradication of diseases. And such goals require integrating new tools. We heard our generative AI. We heard about creating an analytical pipeline. It's a whole web of connection. It's all about the collaboration. That is outside the lab. So be curious, be connected, and understand whatever you have inside four walls should have impact for outside these four walls. Four, think translational. It's quite interesting when we say translational, right? It's, it's how to translate a language to another language without compromising the meaning. In healthcare, when we talk about translational, is how you can create an idea and translate it to impact. For example, Kenneth, 14 years old, student, his grandfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer, and he was rolling around, sometimes get lost in a very busy city, and it's quite intense for the family with such underprivileged uh, kind of care as Alzheimer. Regardless if it's a wealthy co uh, country or not, the disease itself, it set the needs of more care. So for him, he created a very, as he described it, simple idea. He put a sensor in the socks of his grandfather. And this socks, when the, his grandfather wakes up and stands up, it will send a message to the mobile of the caregiver. And then the caregiver will know that his grandfather is up and walking and moving. So we'll alert the staff, the caregiver, to come and take care and accompany him wherever he, he wants. He he's now had a TED talk. I think I advise you to listen to him. It's quite inspiring. And now he's an innovator for a simple. He just wanted to save the life of his grandfather, to make sure he's safe. And that brings me also to another uh, topic. The fifth advice, and this has touched my heart personally, get comfortable with failure. Whatever failure you describe it. Failure is a data. It's a very expensive and precious data. Here, Mr. Wilson, he created something very interesting. He was making something to record the rhythm of the heart. He wanted to hear the heartbeat recorded. He was busy making everything, making the circuit, and then he was approaching a box. He took a sensor and he put it. He didn't realize it's the wrong one. It's a bigger size, a wrong size. And he put it together, and what he created, actually, it was the pacemaker. He created the pacemaker that saved countless of lives of patients. 
And another thing, this he considered as a mistake, it's now worth more than $10 billion by 2034. So there's an income, there's a profit, and there's also the value as human value to save lives. Be comfortable with failure. Be, share this failure. Admit it's a failure, because this failure will help you not to do the mistake again. Never do the same mistake twice. That's the biggest learning from failure. And I don't want to say it's a failure, because I don't know another word right now, other than failure, but it is something we live as scientists and we know it happened to us. And to avoid all the failure, it's very important to collaborate. Collaboration across borders, across disciplines, and even perspectives. We heard about telemedicine. We heard about COVID-19 pandemic. We all lived that. And since COVID-19 hit, there was a huge shift in healthcare innovation to decentralize the healthcare. There is no longer a patient goes to the, pay, to the doctor. There's no longer the waiting list. The whole innovation and investment is how we can decentralize the healthcare, including the clinical trials. Clinical trial is still the big hurdle and the big must to get accessibility to any treatment. So now, the decentralization, even including, now if anyone wants to go to say, I want to do a clinical trial, decentralize, the investment will come if you show as an innovator, you are able to collaborate, you are able to integrate telemedicine, you are able to con uh, integrate other components that has nothing to do with healthcare, has nothing to do with medicine. So collaboration, if you want to be the innovator of tomorrow, collaboration is a must. Ethics, first, always. Ethics, ethics, ethics. If now we all talk about at-home DNA tests, if we can sequence someone's genome for affordable cost, should we do it for everyone? Is it really a must that we should sequence these DNA samples? Why? We need to ask why. What's the purpose? What are the consequences? What are the legal hurdles? For example, 23andMe, this is a big startup company for at-home DNA tests. They didn't think that through. They were a big shot, really the trend of all the headlines in the biotech uh, sector. A hacker. They had access to their data. And they had accessible, they were accessible to 7 million patients or users. And now they had to pay $30 million as a fine in 2023, I think. And now there's someone who will save them, regardless what it is. But it lost the credibility of the company from a rising star to a shame, a shame, a shame company. Health is a human rights. Work toward that. Work toward equity. We'd heard about polio vaccine. Did you know polio vaccine is not patented? When Jonas Salk created, invented the polio vaccine, he didn't. He didn't file for a patent. He said, I cannot patent the sun. When this helped to say, I think now 99% eradication of the disease. And soon, the, the WHO, World Health Auth uh, Organization, are positive that we will wipe out this disease if we keep on the vaccination. Think of oral hygiene. Think of the simple thing of having a clear air. This is all under the innovation in healthcare. And this is also toward equity. And remember, you are not al alone in caring and having this unfairness feeling toward other countries. We hear you, the police, uh, the, the policy makers, they heard you. And that's why they create guidelines. They create amazing guidelines and regulations 
forcing implemented toward the big companies to be compliant to that, including equity, including wellness, including access for healthcare for everyone. So thanks to you, you are inspiring us for the future of healthcare. Be a translator, not a specialist. If I talk the jargon and you don't understand me, whatever I'm doing, it has very limited importance because it's not impactful. Always care about explaining, talking plainly, explaining your ideas, be relevant to whatever is needed in the society. Always consider talking to your family, your friends, someone you don't know about the health issues. It's a reality check that each innovator should consider when they are thinking of what's the next revolution in healthcare. Finally, lead. Um, it's very important, and I have to stop here and take a deep breath myself, because when we have ego, it's a big problem. When I finished my high school, the biggest challenge for my mom to understand as a dentist, I'm a doctor. For her, it's only medical doctor. A dentist is not a doctor. And that was really the big hurdle to finish, be top in the class, and put my sign as Dr. Rasha and Salam, just to make my family proud of me. But then I realized, I forgot the purpose. What is a doctor? Is to help patients, to help people. So I went, it was a really for me to shift and go back, ask the purpose, why I am a doctor. To be honest, shifting from me to you, to communities, to genera new generation, you standing here is fulfilling feeling. It's an amazing feeling. It's beyond any award and beyond any diplomas. And that's why here I come to the end. As scientists, I really believe you are the next. I'm here to see you all thriving, contributing, wherever you want, wherever you want your journey. And this is example. Uh, in April, uh, I was one of the co-organizers of the hackathon Femtech. Femtech is any innovation that target and solve women health, mental health, physical health, menopause, or even postpartum depression or preeclampsia. We had 60 students coming from all over, uh, actually UAE, we had even from Ajwan, Ras Al Khaimah. They came, they've never met. We sat, we thought over the weekend, thinking how to brainstorm, having the basics. They create their own startups. They create their own solutions. They pitch in front of venture capitals and, uh, and CEOs. And it was a really amazing outcomes. And they are now going to Oracle on Friday to have a uh, direct conversation with the innovation hub. So be you, enjoy, be the pioneers in the future and the innovators. Thank you so much.